What's up guys, Freddy with Poor Man Mods here. I just got done completely rebuilding the rear subframe of my IS-300. I installed strong flex bushings everywhere, powder coated some things, reinforced the subframe with some weld, um, but you may not be interested in all that. In this video, I'm gonna show you just how to remove and install the rear subframe. But if you wanna see everything else that I did, I will have a link in the description down below. Step by step on removing the subframe, doing all the bushings, installing everything, it's a, it is a detailed video of this whole project. Um, but if you just need to know how to remove and install the subframe, this is the video for you. So let's get started. Hey, there we go. We're finished doing work in the wheel wells. Now we're going to remove the exhaust and then the drive shaft. But don't look at my exhaust too closely. It's not that good. The drive shaft is pretty easy. You don't have to remove it from the car. At least I don't think you do. Might have to. Um, We'll see, we'll get these 14 millimeter nuts and bolts off. All right, sweet, we don't have to drop the carrier bearing. Now you have an option. Uh, there's two ways I guess you could go about doing this. We have to disconnect the parking brake cable. You can either disconnect it from the little section up here where the two lines meet, or you could disconnect them from the drums here. I really don't like messing with drums, so I might disconnect it up here. I'm going to be disconnecting the parking brake from up here. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. Right there and one on the other side, holding the cable. And then you just slide, pretty hard to see, it's above the drive shaft. You just take the little cable out of its hoop. And uh, that's what I'm gonna try to do. I was finally able to get these parking brake cables down. The connection up there was very rusty and stuck, so I did drop the drive shaft to get access to it. Didn't need to remove the drive shaft if it wasn't so stuck. Here, is where it's about to get real messy. Gotta take this plastic cover off to remove this horribly rusted arm, uh, subframe connector, whatever. And then we can undo the subframe bolt right here. These <laughs> subframe connectors or whatever are so rusty, they uh, might need replaced. They're bad. And it is going to rain dirt. Rain dirt. Told ya. So those, there's two screws here. Those were tens. Let me pull this back. Two twelves. See if these will come out or break or what. Holy crap. broke all right breaking is easy you don't have to really fight it you just gotta drill and tap the the other part all right and that one broke too the bolts on this car like to break because Toyota is kind of known for its rust and this car does have a quarter million more than a quarter million of 
rough, salty miles. That is bad. So, once you get that one off, do the same thing to the other side. But now there are two bolts holding the subframe to the body right here on this little bracket. There's one on each side of the car. You're gonna remove both these bolts. Another thing that you'll have to disconnect is the connector for your auto leveling headlights. I think that's what it is, um, that connector right there. I deleted this system a long time ago, so I don't need to disconnect it, but you will need to in order to drop the subframe without breaking anything. Okay, the subframe is out of the car. We cleaned it up, took it outside, sprayed it down with some super clean, and washed away a ton of grease, grime, and dirt, and a lot of paint and metal too. The subframe really isn't looking that good, along with some of the control arms. I got my subframe back from being sandblasted and zinc coated. It is looking better than I was expecting. Uh, it got rid of all the rust. There is still a lot of pitting, but it actually is in better condition than I was expecting. I've decided that I'm not going to reinforce this with any additional material like I did on my Supra subframe, but what I am going to do is go over some of the welds, uh, some areas where the welds are just incomplete or just are really, really poor. So I'm going to use my cheap flux core MIG welder for this, uh, just to give me some little bit, just to give me a little bit more peace of mind with this. And then once I finish adding some weld, I will powder coat it. Okay, I got the four subframe bolts loosely in. I gotta tighten them. The longer bolt goes in the front with this little bracket, and the shorter one goes in the rear with this big washer thing. And now, I'm gonna tighten them. Before you really tighten down these front bushings, you gotta get the two bolts in the front of this black bracket first. All right, we'll get this subframe tightened up. Get this bracket on and and basically just start uh, tightening everything up and reassembling it. The reverse process of what the reverse process of when you took it apart.
All right, got the subframe in the car. I didn't fully do a step-by-step -step on the reinstallation of the subframe. Pretty much, it's just the reverse process as when you removed it. When installing the subframe, having the car on jack stands like this, um, I ran into a little bit of trouble with the shocks getting in the way, and also, it's hard to make the subframe completely uh, at the right angle that the car is. So when it's on just jack stands in the rear, the car is angled up. So you kind of have to get the subframe at that same angle to properly slide on those like dowel pins in the chassis to get it to seat right. Um, so when I was jacking it up, some of the bushings in the subframe were pushing out and then I had to get my jack and jack the bushings back up. Um, Nothing was really difficult. It was just little things were fighting me, trying to get it lined up right in those bushings. But if you take your time and have two jacks, you should be just fine. I didn't have anybody else helping me. It was just me and two jacks doing this. Um, a transmission jack, I tried to use a transmission jack um, first and there wasn't enough room. The car was too low to the ground and it wouldn't fit underneath the car. So if you had this car on a lift or higher jack stands, a transmission jack might help you out, but I only had the clearance for a low profile jack. So I hope the I hope what I showed you in this video is helpful. Um, if you have any more questions uh, on how to remove it, shoot me a message or a comment down below and hopefully I can help you out. So if you wanna see everything else that I did uh, for this subframe project, all the subframe bushings and even the drive shaft that I did, um, I'll have a bunch of links to other videos down below. I broke it up into small, more easier to digest bits, but I also have a full length video of everything that I did. So all that will be down below. Um, I encourage you to check those out as well. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something and we'll see you next time. Thanks.